Coming up on Shelby this week, we welcome an important facility to our community. This new building will be providing rapid response times and here at Shelby this week, we were given a private tour that we will be showing you. Are you in need of plans to celebrate America's birthday? We'll tell you where you can bring all of your family and friends right here in Shelby Township. It's officially summer here in Michigan and the township has plenty of summer fun to be had at any age group. We will tell you how you can enjoy a little music outdoors this summer. All this and more coming up on Shelby This Week. Station number five is officially open to service the community of Shelby Township. This marks the first new fire station building since 1993. Hey. The public was invited to an open house to celebrate the fire station. Not only was the ribbon cut, but the standard firehouse tradition of uncoupling the hose was presented to the public. Chief Swinkowski, along with Township Supervisor Rick Stathicus, gave remarks about the opening. Members of Shelby Township Fire Department welcomed guests with popcorn and fire hats. During the open house, people were invited to look inside the fire engine along with touring the facility. This station will house a fire engine, an ambulance, and a utility vehicle. Well, public safety is very important here in Shelby Township, and our Board of Trustees supports public safety, as you know. And I'm just so happy that Jim Swinkowski, Chief Jim Swinkowski, and the entire um, uh, fire department, they were able to build this within budget. And uh, there was no bonding, no borrowing. We did it in cash. And I'm especially proud of the fire department for getting it done. With the opening of this new station, this will mark a fire station on each corner of the township, which is ideal when the department's goal is to always have rapid response times. Until this opened, we only had one station east of M53, so that's 12 and a half square miles covered by one station. And once they're out and you know going on a couple of runs to get other resources over here, with traffic, you know, especially coming on 23 Mile and Shaner, and you can't get over here. So the biggest thing is to be a quicker response time. It will give us more resources east of M53. So now we will have two stations, and so we'll have a uh, redundancy and um, better response times. One of the most important design aspects of the station is the fact that sleeping quarters are closest to the garage. When a call comes in, it will give the firefighters fast service to hop into their gear and trucks. After the ceremony concluded, the first call was called into the station, making it officially open for service. And coming up later on Shelby this week, we were given a private tour of the station with Chief Swinkowski, so stay tuned for that. The Shelby Township Police Department are part of an initiative to keep people safe on the road. Distracted driving is an epidemic in our country. People that aren't paying attention to the road, uh, they're checking their phone, uh, they're texting, they're, they're checking social media, they're sending an email or, or whatever while they're driving. You know, they're afraid they're going to miss out on something if they're not on their phone. And the Shelby Township the Police Department have partnered with other law enforcement agencies in an initiative called Operation Ghost Rider. We're announcing to the public, we're letting them know up front, stop texting and driving, stop checking your phone, stop emailing while you're driving. And so what Operation Ghost Rider does is we actually go in what we call a ghost vehicle, it's an unmarked vehicle, and we have a law enforcement officer in there who's a spotter. We drive around we look for people driving distracted or even running red lights or doing any other uh, behavior that's endangering the public. We radio to a marked unit, have them initiate a traffic stop. Ask law enforcement about the frustrations of driving and you are guaranteed to hear a lot of comments about distracted drivers. You know, it's not like you're checking your phone real quick. It's, it's the ones that are, seem to be having a full conversation back and forth, you know, that, that have their phone up for an extended period of time and it's, it's, it just doesn't make sense. I was doing 45 and you came by in the left lane going, uh, going much faster than that. And because it doesn't make sense, Operation Ghost Rider is designed to educate and enforce a crackdown on distracted driving. The goal? To reduce crashes. Because people are dying. Children are dying. Uh, it's scary. I'm scared of driving the roads. 
I have to be honest with you, there's so much traffic now. The economy is doing, doing well. Uh, there's cars everywhere. And uh, just stop at a, at a light. And I don't mean looking around at the people sitting at the light with you because they all have their heads buried in their phones. I'm talking about watching the people crossing the intersections and watch the alarming number of people coming through an intersection at 40, 45, 50 miles an hour that are driving down without their, head, their, their eyes on, on the road. It's horrifying. Uh, we need people to also understand that really on average when they're looking at that portable electronic device, generally they're look, looking down for 4.6 of every six seconds. So if you put that into perspective, that's the equivalent of driving the length of a football field while blindfolded at 55 miles per hour. Recent comments on the police department's Facebook page indicate that residents view this as a money grab. The chief says nothing could be further from the truth. This is not a money grab. If this is a money grab, why would we warn you in advance? We want you to stop your behavior, stop the texting and driving, stop checking your phone, Facebook, etc., while you're driving a vehicle. I know there's a lot of pushback, and everybody thinks it's a, it's a big money grab, and all that stuff always comes up. It's, it's typically what it is, and they always ask about, you know, have people ask about quotas and things like that. And I mean, I've only worked here, but I can tell you not one time has anybody ever told me how many tickets I have to write in a day. Distracted driving compromises the safety of everyone. Operation Ghost Rider is about pushing forward a mindset that will ultimately keep us all safe. My job is to protect the community, not to worry about ticket revenue. Our budget has nothing to do with any revenue coming in for tickets, and I want to make sure I'm clear on the record, this has absolutely zero to do with a ticket grab. This has to do with protecting our residents, protecting our drivers, and keeping our roads safe. Operation Ghost Rider is an ongoing campaign that the police department will continue to be a part of. For Shelby This Week, I'm Stacy Sansaterra. Shelby This Week will continue to follow Operation Ghost Rider and we will keep you informed on their participation in this initiative. There were plenty of township police officers at Ashby Sterling Ice Cream Parlor and they were there for a great cause. Well, it is chocolate if you want to get technical, but it's the department, along with the Women's Life Chapter 9-11 and Back the Badge, hosted an ice cream event and invited community members to come out and get ice cream from the police staff. So all the money is be, that's being raised today, a portion of the money is going to Back to Badge. Back to Badge is actually a fundraiser that they have. It's a 5K, and this year it's going to be a 5 and 10K fundraiser that is going, uh, the money generated from that ends up paying for equipment and is donated to the uh, Honor Guard, Shelby Township Police Honor Guard. It's just f to raise money for the community, support the local police department. Back the Badge is an organization that supports local law enforcement by hosting fundraisers each year to support different causes in the police department. In Shelby Township, Back the Badge will host an upcoming 5 and 10K. All of those proceeds will go towards the National Guard as well. The Women's Life Chapter helped the, with the event and they host a variety of events around town. I love the police, and my chapter number is 911, so I try to do anything and everything I can to support our men and women. It's great for the community because we get to interact with uh, the people uh, from around here, and plus with the children, get to interact with the kids, and they get to see, see us in regular clothes and things like that, so that we're not like just showing up in a police car, you know, in, in a uniform. Sometimes it can be a little scary for kids. In total, the police department was able to raise over $900. That money will help support the National Guard and their trip next year to Washington, D.C. to represent Shelby Township at Police Week. America's birthday celebration is upon us, and that only means one thing. Fireworks will be lighting the night sky. For the first time since 2008, Shelby Township will be hosting a fireworks show. On July 3rd at the Packard Proving Grounds, the downtown development will host the event. This will be the first time the show will be hosted at the grounds. Ford Field will also be open for guests to enjoy and picnic. There are some activities being held and that's through the DDA. That's their main headquarters and they have some different activities. I believe they have a, a concert going on so get there at 5 o'clock. Uh, with the family, free entertainment. Also, they're going to have some food trucks, uh, some tents set up. Uh, I'm sure there will be some uh, little kids' activities as well. So come on out and have a great night. The Packard Proving Grounds will start welcoming guests at 5 o'clock p.m. Fireworks show will begin at 10 o'clock. At both locations, guests can bring in food and alcohol.
Do we have over 40 officers assigned just to this event itself, uh, above and beyond our normal uh, road patrol for the evening? Um, we'll have multiple people uh, in and out uh, side the event. We'll have foot patrol, canine officers, we will have traffic officers, we'll have individuals uh, uh, monitoring the crowd. Um, but as you and I have spoken in the past, it's really going to take, uh, you know, some awareness by all the people. We hope that everyone comes and enjoys the fireworks safely, doesn't engage in illegal behavior, and uh, um, doesn't overconsume alcohol, and, and is cognizant of their, 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 their fellow people there. The event is free and open to everyone. Bring your lawn chairs and blankets for the Shelby Township Concert Series. The Shelby Parks, Recreation, and Maintenance Departments are sponsoring this, this series. On three different Wednesdays during the month, the concerts will be hosted at the Shelby Township Municipal Grounds. The first concert kicks off on July 5th at 7 o'clock. The band playing will be Cadillac West. This is a free event, and if you have any questions, you can call 586-731-0300 or visit shelbytwp.org. After much scrutiny by environmentalists and wildlife enthusiasts, the director of the Huron-Clinton Metropolitan Authority, Greg Pfeiffer, has been told to make a paid administrative leave of absence. Environmentalists are upset because they feel like Stony Creek Metro Park has been excessively groomed and tendered since Pfeiffer took over in 2015. Last month, after discovering that a fawn had been run down by a tractor, people began talking on social media about the overgrooming of the park. Many speculate that since Pfeiffer has taken the position, Stony Creek has seen change, which includes the destroying of wildlife and plants in that area. Taxpayers in Macomb County pay a millage, and this year the millage is estimated to bring in about $29 million in revenue for the metro parks. During Pfeiffer's time serving on the board, there has been some controversy regarding alleged civil rights violations and alleged age, race, and sex discrimination. The Board of Directors will be conducting an internal investigation and will determine how they will proceed with Pfeiffer's position on the board. Coming up, how one local school landed a spot at a Michigan Educators Conference in Grand Rapids. And a New York Times best-selling author visits the Shelby Township Library to share his newest book with the community. Stay tuned because we have a private tour of the new fire station we talked about earlier. You don't want to miss this exclusive. We'd like to take a moment and talk about severe weather and tips that can keep you safe. Thunder and lightning storms happen all the time. Do you know what to do to keep your family safe? Be aware, if you hear thunder, you are within distance of being struck by lightning. If you're outside, look for shelter inside a large building, home, or in a hardtop vehicle and remember to stay away from windows. If lightning does strike your home, dial 911 immediately and move to a safer place such as a neighbor's home. During a lightning storm, there is no safe place outside. Do not seek shelter under a pavilion as this type of structure does not provide enough safety for you. Never stand under a tree during a lightning storm. As there is many technical reasons for this, just remember a tree can and will be used as a lightning rod. If somebody is struck by lightning, call 911 immediately. Now kids are out of school and summer is here, food for some children may be hard to come by. Schools across the nation have a simple solution to solve the problem. Cafeteria doors will open and host Meet Up and Eat Up. The purpose of this is to provide lunches to anyone who is 18 and under or up to the age of 26 if enrolled in an educational program for the mentally or physically disabled. This project has been ongoing for the past several years. In Macomb County, there are 70 sites available for kids to eat during the week. Some locations provide both breakfast and lunch. During the course of the summer, it is expected the county will serve more than 100,000 meals. To find a meet up and eat up location near you, you can text FOOD to 877-877 or visit the website on your screen. Utica High School published not one but two yearbooks available for their student body to purchase. One of them was in Braille made for visually impaired students. 
As the yearbook staff was putting together the end of the yearbook, they wrote a profile for sophomore student Kaliandra Bowman Tomlinson, who is assisted throughout the school by her service dog, Q. Immediately, they thought about her not being able to read and enjoy the yearbook. That's when they developed the idea to make one in Braille. After researching the cost of the Braille yearbook, the students discovered that it would cost about $7,000 to print one from a publishing company. Instead of going through the company, the yearbook staff decided on a more cost-efficient method. They printed the Braille yearbook at the school. It took about 30 hours to complete, and the yearbook is six volumes because the translation of Braille takes up a lot of space. Although Bowman Tomlinson has been purchasing yearbooks since the seventh grade, this marked the first year she was able to read it. Forty bands auditioned to perform at the 13th annual Michigan Music Conference held in Grand Rapids each year. Only eight were chosen and our very own Mallow Junior High School Jazz Band will be performing for the educators at the conference. The band consists of 8th and 9th graders and in order to be in the jazz band, the students must audition. The school is only one of two jazz bands that were selected to perform. The conference invites educators from across the state of Michigan to provide professional development and to support music education in schools. The conference will be held in January and all of the 22 students along with their music teacher Jeffrey Groth will be in attendance. Both the Michigan House and Senate passed a budget that will affect public schools in the state. After a vote of 23 to 14 in the Senate, the budget will increase funding for the public school systems. Each school will be granted an increase anywhere between $60 and $120. The annual amount that each school receives depends on the district and some schools will receive more than others. The largest increase will be seen by schools that are currently the lowest funded districts. With this budget increase, it will provide school systems that need to meet the needs of at-risk students and also those who speak little to no English. The budget increase will help schools better educate children, especially those children who come from poverty and low income areas. New Baltimore resident and New York Times bestseller, Tom Stanton visited the Shelby Township Library to talk about his new book, Terror in the City of Champions. Arthur Schenk has more on that story. In 1936, the city of Detroit was a city to be envied. Though the country was still fighting off the lows of the Great Depression, Detroit was riding high on the success of their professional sports teams. For in the span of one year, Detroiters enjoyed a trifecta of championships. The Lions won their first championship, the Tigers won their first World Series, and then the Red Wings won their first Stanley Cup. But there was another event that was hiding in the shadows of the nation's fourth largest city, something that most Detroiters were not proud of, the white supremacist organization known as the Black Legion. For Metro Detroit writer Tom Stanton, the contrast of the goings-on in Detroit at the time helped create the subject of his New York Times best-selling book, Terror in the City of Champions. And so these, this very dark story is happening at the same time of this very exuberant, exciting period of these athletic successes, unparalleled in sports history. No other city has had those three championships in baseball, uh, football, hockey in the same season uh, as Joe Lewis is on the rise. And so that's spectacular, but you do have this darker story that overlaps the, the baseball and sports story. And uh, it's... It, to me, it just uh, demanded to be told, and there are so many documents that I could draw on, you know, 900 plus pages of FBI files, uh, Michigan State uh, files that just been untouched uh, for the most part for, for decades, and it's just uh, this rich uh, narrative that, that comes to life, hopefully on, on the pages, but certainly in my mind. We love to focus on local Michigan history, Detroit history. I heard about Tom and his book and I looked at it and I thought it would just be a really interesting topic for the people in Shelby Township. I thought it was a really fascinating read. I learned a lot that I didn't already know and I feel like some, I'm someone who knows a fair bit of Detroit history and I had never even heard of the Black Legion so that was a really interesting thing for me. I grew up hearing the stories of Detroit from my father, from my uncles, my aunts. And if you live in this area, it's just 
part of your nature, part of your fabric. And it's, it's always been so fascinating to me. Uh, you travel through the city now and, and you know things that happen in particular areas. But so I, I came up as a sports fan and then as I grew older, I became much more interested in other aspects of our, our history. And the crime, everybody uh, you know, has some interest in 1930s crime to some degree, I think. Uh, but I'd never heard of the Black Legion uh, in any thorough way. I'd never heard of it delved into in a deep way and I wanted to tell that story and I uh, would come upon it over the years while doing research on other things and so it it's a spectacular part of uh, Detroit's history, a very dark part that most people don't know about uh, and so it's exciting to be able to tell that story for the first time in an in-depth way. If you'd like more information on Tom Stanton or any of his books such as Terror and the City of Champions, you can go to TomStanton.com for more information. For Shelby This Week, I'm Arthur Schenck. As promised, Shelby This Week was given a private tour of the new fire station in Shelby Township. We would like to share with you the tour that we were given by Fire Chief Swinkowski. The uh, location for the station, um, when, when, we, when you sit down and you look at it, we want to be in residential areas. Those are the people we service the most, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we're always there. On here, he can get dispatch information. This is where they do the reports, you know, talks to our uh, shift commander, our battalion chief over at uh, station one. And this is where they do the paperwork and this is where all the business end of it happens. So this station, we actually built a, uh, right off of where the ambulance will be, right outside this door later on tonight. This is where all of our medical supplies will be so they can restock their ambulances. And then we obviously have our portable radios so they can swap batteries in and out instead of physical fitness. Um, th and this was going back 25, 26 years when I first hired on. But over the last five or six years, or basically since I've been chief, we took a hard look at how we, you know, we sat down with our workman's comp, sat down with our human resources director, and looked at what's causing our injuries, how can we prevent it? And so we actually started getting rid of the machine type weights that you might see in some of the health clubs, and going to a more core fitness. Um, this area will be our busiest area of the five stations. Um, here we are out back. You can see we do have a uh, parking lot over here for the cars, and then we have an area for the crews to train. So anytime we're doing uh, like training, whether it's fire ground training, whatever, they don't always have to come into our station one. Our instructor can come out here and work with them. If we're doing a refresher on, let's say, ladders or using some of the tools like airbags and stuff, we can just work right here in the parking lot. Up next, we'll tell you a great way to enhance your garden. One local store is offering free seminars. And many of us know a good volunteer in the area, but one local organization is taking the time to honor those who have dedicated their time. Stay tuned. When they test you, stand firm and move only when you hear the seatbelt click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. People think I'm trash. They're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. Calling all gardeners, English Gardens will be hosting free seminars starting on July 8th. The seminars are hosted by expert gardeners who will share their wisdom to participants. In some cases, gardeners who participate in the seminar will be able to take home the creation that they make at the site. You do not have to be a skilled professional for these workshops. They will help you in your ability to garden. For those people interested in partaking in the seminars, more information can be found at EnglishGardens.com. Summer is in full swing around here in Shelby Township, and maybe your kids are looking for something fun to do. Well, Utica Community Schools has the right program for them. From now until August, UCS will offer different themed summer camps throughout the week. Any child who is in kindergarten through sixth grade can participate, and the costs vary depending on how long your child will be at, at the camp. Students are divided into groups depending on their grade in school. Not only do they get to learn and be creative while in the classroom, but the students will go on field trips throughout the summer. Some of the topics offered this summer include space, fitness, gaming, and into the wild. If you would like more information, contact Utica Community Schools at ucseducation.org.
The Shelby Township Senior Center is very proud of not only their members, but also their volunteers. With the many projects and activities held every day of the week for seniors in the community, the center would not be able to run without the volunteers giving a generous amount of time to the people. Especially grateful for everybody's service in whatever capacity that may be. Uh, we also appreciate our community partners that help us give back to our volunteers. So uh, Shelby Crossing, wonderful uh, to sponsor our event last night. So we're, we're grateful to everybody for their help. The volunteers were celebrated in a wonderful fashion because they have given back in so many ways to the Senior Center. Some of the volunteers at the center put in more hours than the staff, and they really care about the people who are at the center after looking forward to the day's activities. The yearly celebration was able to recognize 120 volunteers who have dedicated many hours. And that does it for this edition of Shelby This Week. You can watch us online all the time on our Facebook page. Just search Shelby TV. We will leave you now with more scenes from our private tour of station number five. Thanks for watching.